Just a friendly reminder that the opinions expressed on this show are not worth a Canadian penny, so disregard anything you hear that might get anyone in trouble. And despite some of the great ideas you may hear, don't try them at home. Go to friend's house instead. It's time to get a gun. That's what I've been thinking. Well, I could afford one. And if I did just a little less drinking, time to put something between me and the sun. Welcome to episode 238 of Slamfire Radio for January 4th, 2018. The first first show of the new year, kids. I'm one of... <laughs> yes, Mark? Wow. <laughs> Gee, gosh. Well, somebody woke up on the wrong side of the new year. Uh, I'm, I'm one of your hosts, Trevor. And I'm Adriel. And I'm Kelly. And I'm Brian. And Matthew sends his best. Yes, he does. Does he really? He does. No, he sent Brian. That's not saying a lot. He sent Brian. That's not his best. That's not saying a lot. That's like saying I'm paying attention. Yeah, yeah I think I think you're right. I think Gabriel's right. Matt actually sent me because I'm here and he's not. So. Oh, there you go. Well, anyway, I got to spend time with him on the on the. Oh yeah. What is that? We'll get into that a little bit. New Year's. Yeah, yeah New Year. Yeah. So. so he's a, how did that go? How many? We were before we started recording. Brian was telling us how much he gained over Christmas. We all hate him. We'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's uh, let's get into what we did this week in right. guns, which is brought to us by uh, um, what we did this week in guns is who keeps fighting with their microphone? Me. Sorry. Are right, you done? Fixed. Perfect. <sighs> Squirrel. What we did this week? That was just an excuse because I screwed up. The what we did this week in guns, so I needed to use <laughs> you as a distraction and throw you under. Scapegoat, so I think, is what it's called. Totally what it was, yeah. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine uh, well, well, thank you. I appreciate your uh, understanding. Well, All right, fine. take 14. What we did this week in guns is brought to you by the Calgary Shooting Center, Canada's premier firearms retailer. Calgary Shooting Center has Arrowhead Coffee and Mugs. A portion of all Arrowhead Corporation profits goes back into helping CF, CAF members and CAF veterans and CAF families. Awesome. So if you're not aware, Arrowhead Coffee is kind of like the equivalent of Black Rifle Coffee. It's a veteran-owned company. And, well, do we know that Arrowhead yeah, it is? is vet- it is. Okay, it is. good. So Arrowhead is also a veteran-owned company, and they donate a portion of their profits to veterans because the liberals don't, so somebody's got to do it. Thank you, guys. Um, the website's really cool, and you can actually, like, order your coffee. You pay so much a month, and then they just keep mailing you coffee. Oh, subscription model, hey? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tell me I'm right, and I'm not confusing that with uh, the other guys. Okay. All right, good. <laughs> we'll tell you. We don't know if it's true or not, but we'll tell you that. Good the, lis- the listeners can tell you if you're wrong. Yeah, they're already telling me that I'm wrong. All right. I don't. Moving on. Wow. It's like we're rusty. Well, it's like I'm rusty. Nobody is going to tell you if you're right, Trevor. That's not how this That's works. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Brian. What did you do? Uh, let's see. Uh, the last episode we uh, had, uh, you guys pointed out a pretty good deal on Federal 223 am ammunition and um i decided to go buy a couple thousand rounds so um that is i it's actually showed up at the store this week so i have to go down and pick that up um at the store so it was a, a cabela's thing and you had it shipped yeah. to the store yeah i just had it shipped to the store because that way cool. i don't have to pay shipping so nice yeah it would have been better if i'd gone in the morning and actually had the ammunition they had in the shelf but they sold out of um eight eighty boxes in a day. It's not a lot. Yeah. Now, yeah. yeah. So whatever. It's this was easy. Um it was odd though because I tried to first order it at the service counter and they're like, it's easier for you. It's easier for us if you do it online. <laughs> <laughs> We're not paid to do your work for you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bam. Anyway, whatever. What whatever was that works. counter called, Brian? What's that? What was that counter the, called? The, uh the counter. The oh, customer they, service yeah. counter. Yeah, that one. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> anyway, it's it wasn't painful, uh, but I need to get that in hand soon so I can apply for my rebates because that's where it really makes the makes it really affordable. Um, I honestly, for the price, I did the math. I can't make it 
myself for that price plus all my time so wow yeah to heck for three loading especially reloading 223 because the brass prep sucks uh, yep. It depends on what I'm. Like, I'll still hand load my long range ammo, but this stuff is just for 100 yard and in. So whatever. It's yeah. as long as it comes out the end of the barrel, it'll be good enough. Um, yeah, it's completely uh, non lethal and non accurate at two. Uh, <laughs> no, but it just might not meet my standard for accuracy at 200 yards. That's all. All right. It all depends. You know, I'm, I'm not. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, the bullets don't stop at 100. They don't put the brakes on. But anyway, um, they just but, go into another time zone. They fall. Yeah, and they just drop. Third dimension. But I probably won't use it for my 800 yard loads. Okay, that's is that okay, no, guys? No, huh. no one should ever have clear, to shoot out to 800. Time. Why not? It's too far. Well, it's I, it, I'm shooting. I'm not walking. Still. <laughs> it's not like I, <laughs> Man. Like if it's at 800, I'm like, you're fine. Just go, man. Just, just go. Get a we'll, let the, we'll let the I, jets get you. That is a different level of furlough achieving than I've <laughs> ever heard of before. No, that's too far. I don't want to be bothered. <laughs> yeah. Don't you have a 308 with a big scope and a chassis? I do. Isn't that for shooting long range? My range max out 600 yards, buddy. That's it. And there is nothing after 600. Like, the world is flat, it stops at 600, and you fall off. I thought it was 650. No, it's 600 yards. <laughs> or is it 550, Trevor? Did you ever get that straightened out? It's finally, it's finally straight. It's 550 meters or 600 yards. Uh, uh, yeah. Did you ever, yeah, did you ever get that straightened out with what the guys want to actually do, if it can be officially done there, or are they just going to wing leg? on it. Muff, oh, muffins okay. on it. And I think, yeah, I think... Um, yeah, we're not investing the kind of money that they want us to invest because, frankly, we don't have to. If we want to have sanctioned matches, the people who want to shoot the sanctioned matches need to join. Just like if you want to shoot an Ipsic yeah. match, you have to be a member of Ipsic, but the club doesn't have to join Ipsic because there is no club affiliation. So um, F-Class is, is along the same lines, if I understand correctly what it, how it was explained to me. So, And if you have uh, want to have a sanctioned match, uh, the Royal Nebraska Rifle Association shows up with everything you need to put on the match. They have like a, a have match in a box will travel kind of thing. So good, good, yeah. yeah and very good. but at, at least uh, the guys who are local to your club can get good practice in, and then if they yeah either sure. bring bring sure. the Rifle Association in or go to um, one of the military ranges that the uh, Royal Nebraska Rifle Association uses. So. Yeah, and I mean yeah. for for good practice, they they don't need a four thousand dollar camera system. Um, no. We could buy some flags and some targets, and that should be you know, yeah. The fights. Well, so. it's only six hundred yards. I mean, they can walk up and down range to check their targets. That's fine. That's not that big yeah. a deal. Or take like an ATV or whatever. They can they can make yeah. it work. Yeah, yeah, cool. All right, uh, let's see. Now, speaking of uh, Cabela's and reloading, um, I think maybe I'm gonna go pick up an RCBS Charge Master powder dispenser. Nice. I think I love. I've not heard a yeah. I've not heard a bad review yet, Brian. Yeah, well, um, some people who I think highly of think highly of it. So now, would you use that for your eight hundred meter ammo? Yeah, yeah, you would, eh? It's that oh, precise. Yeah. Well, that's that's and that's why I, I asked the guys. Like uh, the person I asked is Ryan Stacy, who's the current national champion, and that's what he uses. Never heard so, of. So yeah, never heard of. I know you've never heard of him. Yes, be nice. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Unlike you, he has a sense of humor. He's And he's not afraid to shoot 800 meters. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll, he'll yeah. actually hit something at that distance. Yeah, too. exactly. Yeah, yeah, he will. Yeah. 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 It's, not even, it's not even a flip of the coin with him. It's nope. it's pretty good. Yeah, it's on. So, yeah, no, he uses one. So, I'm thinking, eh, I've got some coin laying around that, you know, from a rifle I sold. So, maybe this would be a good investment in equipment that'll speed up my reloading. Because I'm going to load 1,000 or 1,500 rounds of of good ammo this year. So I should probably up my rate above 50 rounds an hour. So mm -hmm. yeah, this will help yeah. it just because yeah. it's automated. Um, you do your other uh, steps of the process and then that thing ticks away in the back in the background. And then by yeah. the time it's done, you're ready to pour it into your shell. And yeah, that's the thing I could be seeding a bullet while it's, it's charging, it's pouring another charge. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, up till now, I've been doing like a tray full and I'll, I'll load all 50 rounds with powder and then I seed all the bullets. But this way I can do sort of two things at once. 
So and continuous. You're not you're not stuck yeah. to batch process, and you can just yeah. keep going continuous. Yeah, because honestly, I hate when I have to stop in the middle of a tray because it just seems wrong to stop in the middle of a tray. So I'm stuck there until that's done, despite what you know, life happens. Oh, that was on fire. Yeah, I know, but I I got to finish the tray here. I can't. You know, this way I'll be able to run out of the burning building, and I won't feel bad. So it's all good. Yeah. With him. Uh, with with am well, well yeah um yeah it's gonna take me a while to take all that yeah hmm. I should eh, I have fire extinguisher I'll be fine it's all good I can I can stand at the door to to the man cave and and beat off the flames until the fire department comes it's all good Great. I'll protect the room that's important while yelling at my family to get out it's fine <laughs> you all go I'll be fine that's the plan you're um, at the point where you need to start digging up <laughs> yes yep. yes I do. Yes. Anyway, uh, let's see. I did get out and shoot a Maple Seed Challenge uh, there before Christmas, Kelly. But, yes. yeah, I shot Rifleman, but I didn't shoot Expert. So I was a little a little frustrated, but I got cold. So I said, heck with this. I'm done. I'm it not was challenging, this. wasn't it? It was a hard target. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. It was, a bunch of snow. it was hard. Yeah, with a very small portion in the middle, that was worth the most points. Yeah, so, but I did actually get to shoot my completed 1022 build, so that was good. That worked out mm. well, so I'm reasonably happy with it. Um, yeah. I'm not saying I won't put a nicer barrel on it sometime this year, just because I'm, a, you know, just enough of a gear gear whore to want to do that, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay. I got to see if you guys are coming back to Barry too, so. Yeah, I, we... We're planning on it. We're just looking okay, at other good. places first. Because I was, I was thinking, but I think I want to actually sit through a full class and actually take instruction from you this time. <laughs> I think that would be fun. So it fun. works. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, it's for sure. Well, honestly, I want to shoot beside Greg May, and uh, and we can. You, you know how it is when you're competing with someone who's really good, and you, you're both upping your game to beat the other person. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. that's all good. So I'm down with that. Doesn't sound like anything I would do at all. Yeah, no, no nothing's a contest with you for sure. What? Um, yeah, nothing except everything. Um, yeah, and the only, yeah, the only other thing I've um, that's of any note is I totally canceled my plans to go to Utah in May. Yeah. Uh, just uh, a bunch of reasons, and then I realized, oh yeah, it's my mother's 80th birthday that week. Maybe I shouldn't be going to Utah. Maybe I should be going to spend time with my mom when she turns 80 because she'll probably never turn 80 again. I'm pretty sure. What was in Utah? Uh, I was going to go to a match thing and hang out with Tommy and uh, one of the other guys from his podcast, but. Nope. Eh. Yeah. Good idea. Just, if you're going to like a Mag 120 or something, then I'd be like, well. Yeah, again. She'll turn 81. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. We're not sure. So Never know. Her, but yeah. yeah, no. But anyway, so I'm going to be a good kid and go, you know, do good kid stuff instead. So it's what happens when you're an adult sometimes, unfortunately. I wish I could be better, but I'm stuck being an adult. So who's next? Uh, that would be me. I was actually on mute because I was sending you a private uh, Voxer message. We'll get back to that later. <laughs> um. Where are we at? All right. So um, I went to Captain Andy's on Boxing Day and uh, brought the 1911 um, crew with me. There was too many people and not enough 1911s. Um, Andy and I had 1911 goals, but spouses and friends and stuff were around and they had alcohol goals. So, yeah, we uh, we had to balance it all. As a result, we didn't get uh, we didn't get all of the 1911 work done, but we did get a lot done, and I learned a lot of stuff. Um, some of the lessons learned were um, don't break Adriel's gun. That was one of the uh, one of the big ones. So you learn by doing, though, right? You're a kin kinesthetic learner. Absolutely hands yeah. on. Yeah. I can't learn from a textbook. Can't read it. I can't mean, be told it. Got to do nope. it. Gotta break it. Really, you couldn't. You couldn't figure out that not breaking his gun was the better option before you actually broke it. Really? Listen, we we talked this up so much about how Adriel's gun would be the guinea pig, and we would do everything first to Adriel's, and it wasn't just talk. I had to, <laughs> I had to let everyone know how serious I was about that the process, if you will. So now they know. Now, now they yeah. know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I think this will be uh, there'll be a, a final wrap up to this in a couple of weeks where um, 
then we'll talk about the the rationale for this project and and going forward what I would recommend people do with their Norinkos if they do want to clean up their Norinkos. The project has actually been getting a lot of feedback on um, Instagram. A lot of people are like, "Hey, I've got an MP29. I had no idea you could do stuff like this to them. Where are you getting your parts? What do you? How did you fix this? How did you do that?" Uh, it's also drumming up business for the for uh, Denise gunsmithing business. So that's awesome because you know we him and I talked about doing this, bringing some in, tuning them up, and and selling them as tuned guns out of the shop. And he has uh, since bought more 1911 um, gunsmithing tools and equipment. So um, that's going to be, it's going to continue to be pretty awesome. Um, I've got, so I've got two coming. One to replace uh, Adriel's that we broke. And I'm going to get one from listener Chad Gross. And I'm going to do, I'm going to tune that gun too. But the only things that I'm going to replace are going to be the cut the slide for uh, and proper dovetails for proper sights, put in a barrel bushing, and put in a barrel uh, link. And Everything trigger else. Job. Trigger job. And trigger job. But I'm not going to replace the trigger parts. I'm going to actually tune the parts that are in the gun. So I did that with um, your trigger. We we, um, we put a traditional trigger job on yours, and we put a radius cut on mine. So that gives more of a rolling break than a glass rod break. The Norinco sears were actually so short that they don't fit in the jig. You can't actually get the, 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 the stone on there to change the shape of them. So huh. we had to go with the, uh, with the other style, which is fine. It still does a, does a great job. So, um, lots of polishing and lots of, uh, polishing <laughs> really. Um, so, um, here's what I learned. Um, the, when you put the Norinco frame in a vice or any 1911 frame in a vice, it's really important to use an actual 1911, um, frame block. Like we've seen these for air 15s that hold the lower, hold the upper so that you don't crush them or twist them or anything. We put too much pressure on my frame and in the weirdest spot too, we were holding the the gun in the frame by the um, by the grip, and when it came time to drop the hammer in, the frame had closed up at the back where the hammer goes, and we had to open that up. And we just used actually a Norinco hammer and put it in there and wiggled it back and forth just to get the spacing right again, so we could drop the trigger group back into the gun. Um, and the other thing that we learned was the um, the tools that we have between Andy and uh, Denise gunsmithing shop, uh, you can tighten the tighten the frame or tighten the the rails on the frame by putting a steel plate, like it's a die, it's a rectangular steel plate that fits between in the slot on the frame where the rails are, and then you beat those down with a hammer. And what that does is it tightens the slide to frame fit and prevents an up and down wobble in the frame in the uh, in the gun and then you tighten the frame or you tighten the slide by putting in a special clamp that fits inside a vice so you start by putting pressure on the back then pressure on the front pressure on the back pressure on the front and um, you get a baseline you take out some calipers you measure it before and then you tighten it, and then you measure it again and you tighten it we were as much or even more than 25 thou out before we started so we were trying to take huge amounts of play and slop out of these slides, mm -hmm. more than more than you can actually do. The um, now my Norinco forty five, the one the, the Dominion Arms one that I had for Archie Perry, that is the tolerances on that were much better than on the NP twenty nines that Adriel and I got. That I think you could tune, you could tighten up the tolerances, um, but we ran out of time. The idea is you tighten the rails on the frame and you squeeze the slide to the point where the, it's really difficult to put the gun back together. And then you use lapping compound and you hand lap it so that everything matches up and everything is clean and tight and, um, and just feels more like a, like a tuned match pistol. You can't do that with, uh, depending on how far out the tolerances are on the gun, you just can't do it. You can't bring them in far enough 
before you have uh, an actual failure. You can tighten it to the point where it's going to crack before it gets any tighter. Now, there's a difference between the stainless steel and the blued steel. My steel moved much easier than yours, Adriel. They took half the pressure to get it to come in. We got the back to come in on my slide perfectly. Took all the play out of it. Feels great. But the front still has a significant amount of play because we just we actually put dents into the frame or into the slide from the tool. And we decided that uh, we were going to stop before we got another failure. Yours cracked in the back, and mine was starting to dent in the front. So we just called it a day and figured, well, mm -hmm. both these particular examples were out too far. Now, that being said, going forward, I don't think we'll, uh, we'll bother tightening the slides at all because none of this affects accuracy. The barrel lockup in the slide affects accuracy. And depending on who you believe or what article you read, the barrel and fit with the bushing and where that locks up affects accuracy. So the, the play that we're trying to take out doesn't do anything for accuracy. It just makes the gun feel like a better quality firearm, and tightens up the tolerances a little bit. As Matthew said when he was here, if anything, we could be affecting the reliability. You know, you get 1911s that are too tight and they take that thousand round or more break in process before they're reliable. So I don't think we'll bother doing that to any more of the 1911s we're going to work on. We'll just uh, put in the barrel bushings, the barrel link, and uh, cut the dovetails for the sights. And then, of course, uh, before you do any finishing work, do all your rough tuning work first. You're going to do, excuse me, some hammering, some tightening of slides, do all of that, and then throw it in the hot blowing tank. Then do your polishing. I was just kind of... Oh well, I'm in front of the hot, uh, the hot blue tank, so I might as well use it right now, right? Kind of thing. Where now I've got to go back and and blue it again. Well, I don't have to, but I, but I probably will because I scuffed it up a little bit while working on it. So, um, yeah. Any any questions or comments on that, Adriel, mm. or anyone else? No, no, not really. All right. So, um, so right now I'm still saying it's worth doing. And you don't have to buy, you know, a thousand dollars worth of parts. You can the parts. Huh, here's something that's funny. So Captain Andy is showing me these safeties that he bought for one of his 1911s. He's like, check this out. The pin captures the safety on the weak hand side of the gun. It's got like a a slot built into the safety, and there's a extra groove on the pin, and it locks it in. I'm like, you mean like an Arinko? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. That's on the wrinkles coming out of the box, dude. So, you know, you got to keep in mind these Narinkos for 360 bucks come with extended beaver tail, skeletonized hammer, skeletonized trigger, extended slide stop, full length guide rod, um, extended magazine release with a button on it. And if you want to, uh, or in and, Sometimes you can get them with adjustable sights and fiber optic sights. I, they're increasingly more difficult to find. I haven't seen them. I've seen them when people advertising them online. For example, the gun that Adriel bought, when he looked at the picture on the website, it was a picture of an MP29 with a front fiber optic and adjustable rear sight. Unfortunately, that's not what arrived. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you can get one... With the proper sights, right off of the bat, you're you're that much further ahead because you're saving money on cutting the slide for the proper dovetails. So, yep. Um, and then I went pheasant hunting. Now, this was an experience of a lifetime. I've never seen a pheasant, uh, never shot a pheasant, never ate a pheasant. And uh, Captain Andy's got a buddy who's got a membership at a resort somewhere in Fox Harbor, I forget the name of the resort. It's like a five-star resort. This place is sick. It has its own airport for people that fly in on private jets to, you know, go play around a golf or whatever. It's got townhouses where people actually live on the resort and ones that you rent. It's like it's owned by the uh, guy who owns Tim Hortons. It's like it's, it's crazy. Over a thousand acres. So um, Andy's buddy set it up so that uh, 25 birds would be released. So we got, grabbed our semi-autos and we went walking with the coolest bird dog I've ever seen. This thing is amazing. It's smarter than most of my friends, present company excluded, of course. Um, I mean, my friends that live locally that don't listen. Those are the friends I'm talking about, not you guys. So anyway, it was a heck of a day. 
um, unfortunately, my back quit on me and I couldn't walk anymore and it was freezing. <laughs> There's a picture of me on Instagram with ice all through my mustache. It's, it was something else. I, but I wasn't uh, – it's certainly more physically demanding than I was ready for. Um, we walked – three kilometers and i was like yep i'm done and they were like uh well the guy uh, who owns the dog he was like really that was a warm-up <laughs> like usually we would go usually we go a lot longer and a lot harder than that and we would have kept going only the wind was really messing with the dog the dog couldn't couldn't keep the scent down because the wind was just messing with him really really bad so uh i shot to one andy and i connected on at the same time and then there was another one there's a there's a uh uh, hard, fast rule. Never shoot a bird on the ground because you don't know where the dog is. The yeah. grass can be long and the dog could be lost. It's in your sight one second and it's gone in five other different directions. The next second, you don't know where the dog is, so you don't shoot a bird on the ground. So there was this one hen. We come around the corner, there's a hen on the ground. And then the hens won't, won't flush. They just sit there. I could have walked up and kicked the hen, but instead I had to wait for the dog to come and flush the bird and then... I shot the shot the pheasant out of the sky. So out of twenty five birds that were released, we connected with eight, which was not a super duper day. But you know, a lot of factors working against us. It was cold. It was windy. I can't shoot a shotgun. So, <laughs> um, and then we went back to the hunt lodge, and the hunt lodge is just amazing. There's a pile of uh, taxidermy in this place. There's a gaggle of snow goose hanging from the ceiling there's a nice moose mount um poker tables pool tables fireplace just an amazing facility and then you step out the back door and 10 yards from the back door is a trap range like i've never seen i think i counted nine machines and they're coming at you high house low house from the left from the right straight behind you straight in front of you it was a heck of a lot of fun. Hmm. And then um, New Year's Eve party happened with the, the Gunny crew. Unfortunately, Gallon and Filthy never, and Fred. Gallon, Filthy, and Fred were no shows this year. But we had Snuffleupagus here and Tresca. She's a new Gunny at the Gun Club. She's going to be taking her black badge in the spring. Um, and uh, Luke, bang my switch, Luke was here. Um, McClatchy, of course, was here. Lorette was here. Um, good times had by all. We spent a lot of time up in the gun room. A lot of these guys hadn't seen my new, my new walk-in gun room yet, so we spent some time up there checking stuff out and playing with the triggers on all the 1911s and comparing the Nork to the Trojan, etc. So it was nice to nice to see all them. And uh they're all gunnies. Officer Frank was here too, and stuff off, I guess. And good times, good times. So that's uh, all I got. What about you, Adriel? What have you been doing? I've been a busy uh, mm-hmm. Christmas holiday. So I got a cold. Uh, that's why my voice is a little bit weird. I got a pile of reviews complete. Uh, I got a recap of 2017. I reviewed the Marlin Papu, the Remington 780L, Keltec Sub 2000, Savage Axis 2, Savage 93F. Browning EB3, Savage B Mag, uh, Heavy Barrel, and the Gletcher M7. So uh, quite a few guns that uh, I bought. A Savage B Mag Heavy Barrel. Now I've I had a B Mag before, and the accuracy was not good, uh, and not good as in at 100 yards, it was right around um, two to four inches, which is not good enough. This is like a varminting gun. You're supposed to be shooting gophers at 100 to you know 200 yards with this thing. So two to four inches at a hundred is, is not good enough. Um, tried a whole bunch of things on that original one. Could not get it to work. Sent, tried sending it back. Tried a different stock. Just a million. Uh, this heavy barrel version, uh, I just got it out to the range on Sunday, and it is accurate with 25 grain bullets. Uh, with the 20 grain ones, I didn't get that good. But it's again, this is Winchester ammo. There's some Hornady that's out there that I want to try. Uh, the 25 grain stuff was all really good though. Uh, right in around 0.8 of an inch to 0.9 of an inch at, uh, at hundred meters. Very accurate. Um, and now, <laughs> now I'm going to have to keep that gun, um, because that, that cartridge is about the same cost as 17 HMR and sell my Savage 17. Really? It's not like the Savage 17 has done me any wrong, but I nope. already sold it. Oh, did you keep the scope on it? Yeah, no, I'm, gonna, I'm, thinking, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put the scope on this uh, on this B mag, the okay. target dot one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I sold the the Savage to Will. You you know who Will is? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. 
Yeah. So, so it's not uh, like it's got a, it's still in the family. Yeah. Yeah. Still yeah. around. Cool. Um, the Savage B mags come with a real spindly, crappy polymer stock. So I'm replacing that with a, a Boyd's. Uh, I've already ordered that in. So once I need you to get an A17, do a review on that for me, okay? A17? Yeah, I want to. I want to review some of uh, Savage's n- newer uh, B series as well. I want to. Re- all in good time. I've I've got quite a few. I've just finished up, and quite a few I'm still working on. I'm still actually working on. Let, um, well, I'll, I'll I'll come to it. Um, over the break, I also got a Glock 17 with an Apex trigger kit. It was just a fantastic price. It was on Reddit. Stole it. Yeah, I had I had to get it. I had to get it. The guy was like a 10 minute drive away from my house too. So I was like, I gotta get this Glock. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so uh, so I picked up one of those. How Sorry, much Kelly? did you pay for it? Five fifty. Do you want? Oh my god! I know, right? Isn't that gross? Seriously, that was a good deal. Uh-oh. Yeah, the guy needed it gone, and I was happy to help. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, it was a fantastic deal. Um, <clears throat> sold a few hunting rifles. Uh, got that sub two thousand, and I got a whole bunch of pimp out parts. Uh, I, I connected with uh, M Carbo. They they do some parts for the. Uh, Marlin uh, 795 and a couple of other guns. And I guess they got like big into the sub 2000. They've got a whole pile of parts for this thing. Just see what I got here. So I, I connected with them and I'm like, hey, I got this sub 2000. Would you be able to send me some stuff? And they're like, yeah, we'll send you a whole bunch of stuff. So they sent me a bolt tube cover, yes. which is like, a, you know, on the sub 2000, they have that metal bolt tube that you can yes. face against. Try yep. shooting that at minus 30 Celsius. Nope. <laughs> it is cold. I and had the. Tactical cheek cheek piece on mine. Is that the Same like a mind. rubberized one or something? Yep, this are all rubber. Yep. Yeah. So the other thing that uh, I find with the Gen twos, my beard hair gets in between the buttstock and the bolts cover metal thing there, and it pinches it and it pulls my beard hair out. Oh, I hate it. So this is this is nice because it stands your face off from it, and then you don't get your beard hair caught in the dang buttstock. Hashtag beard problems. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a skeletonized charging handle, which was actually nicer than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I thought, well, charging handle, who cares? A charging handle is a charging handle. But uh, the original one's kind of like real thin in the middle, uh, like almost yeah. like a number two pencil right in the middle there. And this one's quite a bit larger. So after all is said and done, does it still have a plastic feed ramp that's just press fit onto a steel tube? Oh, they have stainless ones. I didn't, uh, I didn't ask for one of those. I should get one of those too. I'll wear this one out first. Because yeah, uh, when you drop the mag and the feed ramp comes out with it, it's not a good feature. I haven't had that happen yet. Was that with a Gen 1 or a Gen 2? Gen 1. Like Gen I had, one. Uh, yeah, I had all the red line precision stuff on mine, the fancy sight. Plus I had their, their hand guard that was aluminum and it was a Picatinny rail. And you could fold it up with an optic because it had a locking screw. So when you go to fold the gun up, you would unlock the hand guard, rotate it the other way, mm-hmm. and you didn't have to remove your optic. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, I thought it was pretty good until, you know, the feed ramp, or yeah, the feed ramp came out of it one day. Yeah, they sell stainless ones that you can polish, and then those are those are nice. Um, what else did I get? Uh, extended magazine release, uh, which I didn't really need. Like, my, my hand is, is big enough. I can, I can reach the magazine release, no problem. But it is kind of a thin magazine release, and this makes quite a bit of a larger target. Uh, and then they, they sent me their uh, trigger job bundle, which includes like an armorer's wrench to pull the thing off the back. Um, a trigger spring kit, which made a huge difference. Uh, I had I, I just measured it before, and it was nine pounds. And after doing this uh, this spring kit swap, it got it down to five. So Wow. Yeah. At five, like five is, is right around where I think it should be. Um, it came with an aluminum trigger, so that's not quite as mushy, and it's a little bit more uh, stiff and just feels better. Uh, the aluminum trigger guard, so the the part that kind of locks the uh, bottom there, uh, and then some grip pins and that kind of thing. The grip has got um, these metal screws that screw into these aluminum pins, and you can strip them if you go, you know, uh, Rambo on the uh, on the screwdriver. Uh, so this replaced it with some steel ones. <clears throat> I think that's it. Um, but man, like the trigger pull on it is so much better now. It's uh, it's very different. What would all that cost? Uh, that is around 300 bucks, I think. And what, what's the sub-2000 going for these days? It depends. This one uh, was uh, quite a bit better of a deal because it was used. Um, but if you buy new, they're around $700 here in Canada, six dollars $700. Keep in mind, like in the States, these are, these are $350. they are they are much yep. cheaper, right? Yep. 
Um, kind of yeah, interesting. Yeah, we're paying is like for a, the novelty of non-restricted. And uh, yes, yeah, we, they they have to do a different barrel run for us, um, and uh, it's a folding, which is kind of interesting. It's not. I don't think there's. A, are there any other folding PVs? There's detachable barrel ones. The the Aero Precision. No, not Aero Precision. Aero Survival Rifle. Um, no, the only one the I know that off. folds is that one. <clears throat> and unfortunately, you can't put an optic on it and fold it completely in it. Ah, uh, you can now. So they've this Gen Two has M lock slots on the side, and yeah. uh, Brownells has this mount that fits a red dot on top of it that goes in the slots on the side. So normally it sits on top the the Picatinny rail. You can actually rotate it out of the way, so you can fold this thing down and then rotate the the red dot sight back over. So you can run a red dot now with these guns, and you've got this crazy rotating, uh, re-zeroing red dot thing on it. Um, Military Arms Channel did a, a review on it. It's a uh, it's a neat, and he like threw it in the mud and like dumped it on the ground, and it still ran just fine. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> That's good because the uh, the red line precision one was like three hundred fifty bucks. Oh, this one's way cheaper than that. This is like a That's little cool. side mount that has like a detent that you, allows you to turn it. Uh, enough, enough about the sub two thousand. Um, I got the uh, Type eighty one out, so Tactical Imports sent me one of those. Um, the sight radius is short on it. I shot about a four MOA ten shot group, um, <laughs> so which like isn't fantastic. Like that's <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna like put that on my resume or anything like that. But it was not bad, and uh, I think it could be better with a scope. Uh, I, I I can only shoot so accurate with uh, iron sights that have a twelve inch uh, sight radius. Uh, it's, it's not really uh, a precision setup, right? Um, is Adriel, is there any provision to put a scope on it though? No. Ah, I mean, if I didn't have to send this one back and I was going to keep it and I was like, Oh man, I love this platform. I wish I could marry it. And I'm going to like keep it forever. I would, uh, maybe like drill and tap the side of it and put one of those, uh, drill and taps, uh, scope mounts on there. Um, but I have to send it back. So I'm not, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> that would be very nice of me. Well, the same price as the VZ. No, the VZs these days are thirteen fifty, fourteen hundred bucks. Oh, yeah, they done. They've, they've done gone up. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. There's actually a guy with a VZ out at the range. Um, some Chinese guys, and they're like, "Oh, look at that, the Type eighty one. <laughs> I, I've shot one of those before in China. You know, it's part of their military ah, cool. training, but." Uh, yeah, he's like, no, this one looks really nice. Now, keep in mind, like, in China, the, the guns that they had there probably went through, like, a, th- a thousand people, right? So they're, they're big yeah. to heck. Uh, he's like, oh, this one's really nice. Yeah, that, that, that finish is about what you'd expect from something like this, usually uh, beaten in a little bit more. But, uh, no, it was, it was totally reliable the whole time. Um, I, wish I, I wish it had stripper clip uh, guide feed, what do you call those there? Stripper yeah. clip guys yeah. on it because yeah. I like I like loading with a stripper clip and I I store all my all my uh, seven six two by thirty nine on stripper clips, but uh, what I ended up doing is just pulling the mag out, pressing it against the mag and just pressing them in and it worked just fine. So AK mag, uh, not an AK mag, but you can modify an AK mag to fit it because it does uh, lock the bolt open on the last shot. Okay, so let's. Some AK mags do, but they don't. They don't. Uh, there's no provision in an AK to hold it open. It's kind of like a an M1 carbine with the uh, 30 round mag. Um, so this one does not take an AK mag. It's taking its own mag. It takes its own mag, but you can easily modify an AK mag to fit. So right, right now okay. there's not a lot of the mags for these things in country. <clears throat> so people are using the AK mags, including the P mag uh, for AKs, and they're just modifying. There's a, a, some minor modifications. I was looking on CGN. You can do a, a little bit of uh, tweaking to them, and they'll fit this one just fine. Not, they won't hold the okay. bolt open anymore with the AK mags, but uh, you can use. Do you know if you had an AK mag that? Did have the bolt hold open follower? If that would work, I've never heard of an AK mag with a bolt hold open follower. So that Polish that's, ones, I think. That's something new to me. Okay. So I don't know. Yeah, because so I'm looking at uh, an M305A, and I'm like, ah, oh, my M305 locks open, but my M305 won't. And then I was like, oh yeah, there are certain AK mags that will. So, mm-hmm. and I have AK mags here. I just don't know which ones I have. So, okay, cool. Yep. Um, well, I was at my parents' place oh, over trigger? the, uh, over the winger. Yeah. Trigger. <laughs> um, and, uh, the, uh, I've, I've got a blind out there for shooting deer out of and squirrels keep moving into it and they keep tearing up the seat, making nests. 
Uh, I've shot two out of there already, and I went back, and sure enough, there's another dang squirrel in there. So I shot it. Um, <laughs> and I I don't know how many more I'm going to have to shoot out of there. <laughs> they just love it. They love that spot. It's been there for years, and for whatever reason, this year, they've all decided that's the place to be. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just have to keep my eye on it and keep keep blasting them, I guess. Um, I, I moved from a range bag to a range bin. So I had been running like a large uh, open mouth bag. Um, I've been looking online at a couple of like what other people are running for three gun. There's a lot of gear requirements for three gun. So it's, you know, it's not just a, a simple little like bag. three times run. the gear. Yeah. So I went to, um, I was actually at Home Depot and they had some of these like Rubbermaid bins for like really cheap. So I bought one of those and I think I might run that. Um, my bag carried most of what I needed, but it was kind of hard to fit the belt in. This thing is as tall as my belt is, so I can put belts in there and all my stuff and put it in the back of a pickup truck and not have to worry about dust getting into it and getting in all my stuff, which may have happened with my range bag. So I don't know. I moved to that. I, I also bought a bunch of little, like, um, little bins and that kind of thing to put stuff into it to put then into the bin. So it just sorts it a little bit better. And it's not just a whole whack of stuff sitting inside a, a garbage bucket, basically. Um, I picked up a few thousand rounds of Wildcat from Cabela's. They had it for a thousand rounds for 50 bucks. So that's cheap. So I bought 2000 rounds of that. And that got me thinking maybe I should do like a big 22 reliability test. Some people were saying like, oh, Wildcat, that stuff's total garbage. Um, so I'm thinking, well, what if I shot 500 rounds of, I don't know, everything I got, uh, through a few different rifles and, uh, and see what it does. Maybe it sounds like, like a Matthew project to me, get all scientific well, with it and take a look at the insides and see how like gunky and gory they get. Would that be interesting? Cause I, I just took a look for it. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's 22 accuracy tests, uh, on the website six BR or something like that. They had a 22 accuracy test with like a pile of 22 rounds in like a super precise action. So like that, that, that test has been done. I consider whatever they do to be like law. Uh, but no one's done like a reliability test where they like hammered through like hundreds and hundreds of rounds of different, uh, stuff to see what the, you know, failure rate is like. So it's dependent on the gun too, right? Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say pick pick one gun, and clean it after every five hundred. So pick pick one gun. Well, here, take take your seven ninety five. Well, you want to eliminate variables, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, but that's true. But I do know that there are certain guns that aren't going to like certain ammo at all. Well, as far as accuracy, we're talking about reliability. Reliability. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So as funny well, as it is, my Savage sixty four has failed to hiccup on anything, um, even the like huge hollow point uh winchester stuff so i might do it with that i might do it with a 795 i might do it with a 597 i've got all those options um you know. you're just gonna have to, to it, do it fair and kelly raises a good point you're gonna have to do it three times with all three guns 500 rounds per gun of the different ammo oh that's too much that's too much shooting that's too much reloading oh my god <laughs> all right what about 100 rounds I, so I could I could do 500 split between three guns um, for all the different ammo I've got, or do know, do, do 600 rounds between all three guns. Yeah, Make there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 200, 200 each. I could do that. Yeah, yeah. That'd be I'll good. I'll do test. that. I'll do that when it's not minus 30 outside because that's that yes, tends to be fatal on reliability, anyways. That's, yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and my I'm face tends to 22 freeze. 22 doesn't like the cold. Yeah, they don't. Uh, twenty-two rifles are generally. I've I've found twenty-two rifles. It seems that the firing pin has uh, got more surface area on it and less power behind it, and it just yeah, they freeze up a little bit too quick. Yeah, mm-hmm. ARs do too. I've like the last time we we had a match and it was minus twenty-five. I saw uh, two ARs have uh, their firing pins freeze up and not strike even when you pull the trigger. So, yeah. wow. Yeah. Um, the video that I rage quit. Um, Stacy, the apple seed princess, was like, "Your mags are dirty, dude." Yep, mags were filthy. Yeah. So, get those suckers cleaned up. To, I guess I'll have to clean. Them if I yeah. Do this test. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Anyways, that's uh, that's it for me. Okay, Kels. What about you? What you got? Okay, so just wanted to let everybody know that. Well, I've been working on a bunch of things, but one of the things that we've been working on, I've been talking about it forever in two days, but the CCFR calendar. I know you guys are tired of talking about it. But I don't just, think so. Well, just saying, if people are, just to let them know that it's now 
fifteen ninety five. We as of yesterday, we dropped the price on it because you know it's January. Yep. But the other thing is also the bi monthly draw. So that means twice a month we're going to be drawing for all kinds of different things like ammo. Yes, ammo, gift certificates, different things. It starts on the 15th. So go and buy a calendar. Um, and the calendar, if you buy that, that's going to get actually more women into shooting. So just go and do it. By the way, did you guys like your calendars that you got for Christmas? Okay, yeah. Kelly. Kelly, I was going to tell you, mine is up on. I put mine up on on the wall tonight, just before we started Did recording. You? That's yes. awesome. And I'm very anxious for December. <laughs> that's that's all I'm going to say. And in fact, it, yeah, my okay. calendar might time travel this year. I don't know. Oh, awesome. It's impossible. Hmm, okay. <laughs> all right. Everybody's. My wife so doesn't all... listen to the show. It's all good. Excellent. <laughs> So Minor. all of you are going to be picking your favorite. I know who Trevor's is, right? So, uh, yeah, they're both hanging up on on the wall in my gun room, and uh, like Brian's, mine's kind of stuck on one particular month. Well, she's you can cover I can... Know, January all year round. Anyways, well, and and <laughs> there's a bunch of people that wrote stuff in my calendar, like Summer's birthday, send cash. Tracy's birthday, send ammo. Uh, Angela's birthday and happy clown day and stuff, so I just don't want to see all that yeah. so I'm just going to okay. lock them in and forget about it okay so, yeah. alright uh, the other thing is I also got I got something in the mail recently it was really nice I got something from Anika uh, from I'm at it or Arms she sent me some patches it was very nice she sent a lovely letter as well saying that Trevor you felt bad about something or something and then you liked hearing me complain anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't, uh, know yeah. what, I don't know what any of this is about. But it was really, it was really nice of her. I wasn't expecting it at all. It was a surprise, so it was nice. And, um, yeah, she giggled. I giggled and then I sent her a message and said thank you. So, so I whined because you whined and you got free stuff? <laughs> wine I, I just thought it was odd that she sent you the stuff and there's adriel who does videos and she sent adriel stuff and he did a video and then there's matthew who that? does videos he Who's, doesn't have access to yeah he is actually doing a lot of airplane videos isn't he isn't mm -hmm. he? Hmm. Huh. so he doesn't have the wi-fi to podcast but he can put up a video no problem mm. goes to work. the library yeah work. yeah <laughs> yeah but anyways so it was Kind of and awesome. I did a video. You did. You did do the video. And didn't Maple Seed get stuff? Maple Seed did get stuff, and they did a video as well. So, where's the issue with me getting stuff? I'm I'm still not following your. There wasn't an issue. No, you, the issue was that you know we have two guys that usually do videos, and right. she sent it to somebody who doesn't usually do videos, right? Okay, and that was strange to you. It was odd. That's all. Okay. All That's right. So, did you get some stuff? I got some patches, which was awesome. All right. There you go. Yeah. You enjoy your patches. See how they fit your 1022. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, what else did I do? I'm just moving on because I'm not going to, you know, bite. Uh, we oh, went you did. I, <laughs> no, I did. I just need to move on. Uh, <laughs> went down to Michigan last week. I spent a whole entire weekend in Michigan with Stacy. Awesome. And the directors from Project Maple Seed all went down. We actually, we spent the weekend going over the uh, onboarding process for the instructors. So the manual has been created. We did some tutorial videos for the instructors, different things like that. And just basically getting the process uh, done so that we can contact those riflemen who have have shot riflemen and expressed interest on becoming instructors. We can send them uh, invites and then we can get them on board and start training them so that we can have some more instructors across Canada. So we did that, but then we also got to do other fun things. We went to Freedom Firearms, which is a pretty big uh, independent uh, gun store down there. It was awesome. Um, I got a Guy, a girls with guns hoodies, you know, the ones with the earbuds in the strings. I'm going to test that out. Thank you to Stacy because she got that for me for Christmas. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, we did a lot of drinking. We tested it all the times <laughs> it's available. So, what a surprise. Mm. Anyways. Jameson. Sorry? We brought all the Jameson. 
Or is well, that like Stacy's personal collection? No, Stacy doesn't drink Jameson. So between Bill Wilson yeah. and ourselves, we stopped at the border. We love the Sarnia border, the uh, duty free shop, because Jameson's leader of Jameson's, the ca- the castmates, is like yeah. twenty five bucks. Oh my god! So I had to buy two. Of course. Which, um, yeah. Anyways, so but Bill, he is a Jameson's drinker, so he had a twelve year old and an eighteen year old. Oh my God, they were so good. Even know there was an eighteen. Sorry. Didn't even know there was an eighteen until you sent that picture over. Yeah, and you, yeah. Anyways, so it the smooth? Eight, it's super smooth, but to, it's like two hundred dollars a bottle, mm. U.S. Oh so. wow, that's yeah. yeah. Captain Andy left me alone with his uh, Scotch collection. How'd that work out? Casey and I drank till five a.m. <laughs> I I can't believe that Andy posted that on Facebook too. Right, I'm and like, your reply was perfect. It's like you don't <laughs> even know him. Like, <laughs> what, what were you thinking was going to happen? That's yeah. just no. Yeah, That's, yeah. Mm. And this this was all two hundred dollar plus a bottle as well. Stuff that he had to get from the Scott show at MB Liquor put on. So he should have locked it up and hid it from you. Hey, you know, he chose to go to bed, and yeah. uh, you can do Cho- chose wrong. Yeah, exactly. Actually, when he went to bed, I, I think then I started mooching off of Casey. Casey was drinking some bourbon that uh, Satan himself brewed. It's like 62.7% alcohol. Like, bourbon is hard enough to drink on a good day. This stuff was 627 And, of course, Casey just drinks it like it's water. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. All right. So back to me. Yes. Oh. <laughs> um, did we all talk about what we got for Christmas? No. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. But I got a new scope for my AR. I got the Bushnell AR 3 to 9 scope. Yeah, neat. So I'm excited about that. I tested it out. I can see what's written on my neighbor's fridge. So the people in the backyard. Hey, were you aiming an AR in your neighbor's <laughs> fridge? <laughs> no, just the scope. Oh, I see. That's that's uh, that's a better idea. Yeah, it's yeah. a better idea. <laughs> chose, chose wisely there. Um, yeah. Why 3 to 9? Why 3 to 9? Uh, mm-hmm. Just because of the fact that it's probably it's probably going to work best for me. I can use it a little bit close, and I can use some it for longer distances as well. I'm going to need something for Arcady events. So, what are all. the distances in those? It goes up to 400. Arcady yeah. events. KD no known distance. distance. Yeah. Don't worry, Trevor. They're not going to eight. They're only going to four. You can you can. It's probably within yeah, your I, range of being interested in doing it. Known distance. So is it like kind of like um, a service conditions format? It's a maple seed format. It's exactly oh. the same. We're actually shooting it at the actual distance. No way. Way. That sounds awesome. Yeah, three to nine would make a lot of sense for that. Yeah. Yep. Oh, you might find it difficult to use it uh, in three gun style shooting. Yep. Three three powers. Almost too much for up close. It's too much yeah. for well, up close. I also have a red dot too. So. Oh, perfect. Okay. Are you going to run your red dot on like a 45 degree uh, offset mount and get all like sure. tactical? Yeah. Yeah. Put everything. I'm going to actually, you know, put on things like, uh, what else can I put on it? I don't know. Adriel, Cops I'm going, I'm going to. A laser, a laser yeah. a designator, a flashlight. Bipod. Skittles yeah. container. Fake hand. <laughs> yeah. I like the Skittles container. Master Just key. Like- well, that's why you get the Magpul grip and then you put Skittles in the bottom and snacks yeah. from it. Got to keep your uh, sugar levels up. That's very true. Mm-hmm. I usually eat peanuts, but I can use Skittles. You could put peanuts right. in the grip. It'll, That's true. It'll accept them. Yeah. <laughs> the grip is peanut That's compatible. <laughs> um, I didn't get it. You have to, but if you do, if you do put peanuts in it, you have to put a, a nut warning. A warning. Yes, yeah. definitely. This <laughs> grip may contain nuts. <laughs> or don't touch my don't touch my nuts. Okay. <laughs> Unless you, as long as long as you're not allergic, I mean, if you're, this is true. yeah. Otherwise, have have at my nuts. You know, unless you have an allergy. <laughs> All wow, right. this this nuts went really everyone. quickly. <laughs> and the best part is, she started it. She opened the door. It's beautiful. Oh uh, uh, yeah, the female starts it. All right. Uh, I didn't do any shooting because it's too cold. Minus twenty five. I'm not going out uh, in it. So wait, 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 just... wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got out and shot a maple seed challenge, and you didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> I shot pheasants. 
Uh, see, sure, and she drill shot squirrels. Yeah, in the like, face. Mm-hmm. In face. Did and he I didn't with... shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. No, I'm just whatever. All right. And the, one of the other things I need to make you guys aware of is the fact that we booked our first lady seed. So that means that all ladies are going to this event and it's going to be in Napa. It's going to be April the 20th. We're going to put it out on the network soon. So we can actually register. I thought that was awesome. And the final thing that I did that isn't really gun related, but I actually listened to the most recent MRR and I lost 20 points in my IQ. Thank you guys. I just wanted to say that Trevor, you were on it. Filthy, Ryan, everybody. What's, you know, you guys were talking about nature versus nurture. It yeah, was, na- yeah, nature versus nurture, very common psychological argument for how behavior develop. I know, but you guys were talking about Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I believe we were talking about space wizards and laser swords. Oh, this ha- this yeah. has to do with modern rifles. How I like how <laughs> you see you're talking about genes versus uh, environment, and then we're talking about Star Wars, and it's supposed to be about modern rifles. I think. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Don't don't try and box the show in, Angel. Okay? <laughs> don't pitch, we can yeah. do what we want. Our annual Star Wars review is sought after. People wait for this review with bated breath year after year before they decide whether or not. No, I'm just no. I got yeah. no. Wow, no, that's true. that is <laughs> that is a load of full excrement like I've never heard. My goodness, yeah. I, I waited. I had to wait until I actually saw the movie, and then I listened to it. So, yeah, yeah no, I yeah, I kind of like the movie. Didn't really like it. Anyways, moving on. That's it. All right, let's get into uh, upcoming events. Let's see, which ones are we going to talk about here? Um, reminder of the 8th Annual Podcaster Podcast Network Charity Shoot. It's going to be July 7th, Rescue Gun Club in Balmoral. It's going to be a mini steel challenge match, pistol or twenty two rifle, or twenty two pistol, uh, a round of trap and a round of twenty two silhouette, and then a rifle shoot uh, in the afternoon. Smoke on the water will provide, provide food. Um, do we need to talk about Prairie Fire, Adriel? No, they're all in italics. They're all in italics. Okay. Um, for Lachi, handgun fundamentals. Um, everything is firmed up. Matthew is here, and we confirmed some details. My flight is actually booked. I'm going to be available to teach on both days. So here's what we're doing. Uh, we are doing for Lachi, handgun fundamentals on July 14th. Class, we can take up to 15 people, $200 a person. And it will be our fundamentals curriculum. Day two is another 15 people. It's beyond fundamentals where if you've taken part one, uh, you will, uh, everything that you learned in part one will be expanded upon and new things will be added. And that one is on July 15th, 15 spots, $200 a person. Registration is now open. And registration is confirmed with payment. So generally, we announce these classes a lot earlier in the year and we get a list going and then we're like, all right, now it's time to pay, guys. Well, now your registration is only confirmed when you pay. So if you want to register, you're only registered if you pay. So you can send your registration information, which is simply your name, and then we'll send out some more information requests later on. Uh, but you can send your name and your EMT to slamfireradio at gmail.com, and the details will be posted on our Facebook page uh, in the next day or so, sooner rather than later, because I was supposed to do it yesterday. So, you probably should um, get a range. Yeah, 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 we need a range. Okay. We're going to do it in Edmonton. So around July 4th, yep. around Edmonton. July 14th. At, yeah, at a range somewhere around Edmonton, not just, you know, in downtown or something like that. That would probably not go well. Meh. If it's a range, why wouldn't it go well? I'm we said just, range, not parking lot. We're not going to have a shootout. <laughs> this is this is how you have a shootout in West Edmonton, no? Yeah, and possibly. Um, guys, what's the round count recommended for the event? Uh, it's usually about 300 a day. Okay. Yep. Good question. Thank you, because I forgot that part. So July 14th, 15th, um, 200 bucks a day. Lots of – there's no one registered yet. So um, let's uh, – my flight's booked, so let's get her Let's get her done. Um, what else? That's all we got for now? Yeah. All right. 
News. All right, Brian, will you take the first item, please? I will. This is the, the uh, Ruger uh, PC carbine. So this is <clears throat> basically a 1022 takedown that is chambered in 9 mil. But it's actually pretty cool because um, it comes set up to run Ruger SR9 magazines, but it has another magazine well that ships with the gun that will use Glock magazines. And Glock magazines are kind of a de facto standard in the industry, so that's great for a lot of versatility. You can also apparently buy magazine wells for the Ruger American pistol, but why would you? Wait, who, what? You who, can buy who, a magazine who, well for the Ruger American pistol? Can you buy a magazine well to, mags. take a, to take Glocks? No, 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 no. No, no, no. This is confused. for this rifle. Oh. No, I'm not confused. Yeah, I yeah, understood yeah. that out of the box it takes SR9 and Ruger American because they are the same mag. Um, no, it says an additional magazine well except in Glock magazines. So I it, did. It, right. Yes, I understand that. But you said an additional one for Ruger American. And also, that's also available. It doesn't ship with the rifle. You can buy it separate. Okay. So my understanding is that out of the box, it takes Ruger American. Uh, Ruger American Magwell is available. Okay. Yep. So, yeah, yeah. sorry. You're right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, it is it is a takedown model, uh, which is kind of handy for people who want to use it as a back uh, backpacking kind of gun. Um, it a f- unique sighting system in that it has an aperture rear sight mounted in forward of the receiver kind of seems wrong to so me you never to well you never lose your zero the whole idea there is your sights are both on the barrel so once it's sighted it's sighted in i i understand but you lose a lot of the benefits of an aperture by having it mounted that far forward well However, it's a four minute gun anyway probably i mean it's a uh, it's a rifle shooting nine mil yeah it's yeah, maybe. Um, let's see. The magazine release is interchangeable, so you can flip it to either side along with the charging handle, too. So um, they at least don't hate lefties as much as they could. So I'm good for them. they put the charging handle on both sides. I'd much rather Me use too. left hand to charge a gun, especially when you're too. Yeah, changing the yes. mag with your left hand, charging it with your left hand. Oh, why is the charging handle on the right hand for so many guns? At least these guys give you the option, right? Yep. 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 That's right. Um the muzzle uh, is threaded, so you can put on whatever muzzle device you want. Um, soft rubber butt pad with spacers, uh, so you can adjust it for size for for different people and for what you're wearing. So that I think that's really all pretty cool. Um, it's got the, a rail up front too, underneath the. Uh, yep. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, so you can mount a bipod or a light or whatever. I don't know why you'd put a bipod on a nine mm carbine, but <laughs> people will do stuff. Um, it also comes with, uh, the trigger is a 1022 trigger. So you can use any 1022 components to improve that later if you want. So I, I'll, overall, I kind of like this. This is interesting to me. Um, now the, so far though, they haven't made a model available with an 18 and a half inch barrel. So if it does oh. come to Canada in this guise, it will be restricted, which will make it not good. <laughs> This this would be really fun in a, with a, a long enough barrel to make it non restricted in Canada. Yeah, I completely yeah. don't even care anymore about the existence of this firearm. They'll come out with a longer barrel. Just chill for a minute. Yeah, and then maybe, but because I'm a New Brunswicker and we have stupid caliber restriction laws, I could potentially be charged with poaching if I'm in the woods planking. If I'm oh, in a yeah. resort of wildlife with a caliber, da 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 da, blah blah blah. Yeah. So in in any of the freer provinces, this would still be fun. Yeah, this might make once it's non restricted, it would make a great uh, truck gun. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, for sure. Coyotes, um, crows inside of fifty yards. Yep. Yeah, I can. I I like it. I'm just I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, just plinking. It's all good. Um, but we have so many other options now. What's the price point on this, Brian? Um, it's showing, uh, MSRP is about 500 bucks in the U S so, so what that translates to in Canadian retail dollars, I don't know, but well, five, let's, 600. No, I think it'd be because if the sub 2000 is 350 bucks, what's the MSRP on so it? That, that changes oh. based on the manufacturer. Some manufacturers will sell their guns in Canada for the same Canadian dollar as they do in U S dollars in the U S so we actually get guns cheaper here. Some of them will sell it for quite a bit more, and it really depends on the uh, on the manufacturer. Some of them are some of them 
do us right. Some of them, some of them like do do us wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again, until there's an eighteen and a half inch version, it's not going to be that popular up here. I don't mm-hmm. think, um, because yeah. it's not AR uh, AR ish enough. Because it's got sort of that traditional rifle stock. The the one thing I can't tell is if the cheek if the stock has a, a cheek riser available for it because it's not really set up to use an optic with that stock. No, I guess the not. St- the stock is set up for use of the iron sights, um, which yeah wouldn't work very well with putting a red dot on it. So mm. maybe a really small red dot, but eh, even still, aesthetically, I think it's horrible looking. Even though it's got a fluted barrel and it's black, the pistol, the pistol mag coming out of that magwell looks real weird. <laughs> real weird. <laughs> yeah, and the the rest yeah. of the gun is I don't know a little bit chunky and got some pick rail in some places I wouldn't have chosen to like on the fore end there, but uh, I guess that gives some flexibility. Like Ruger's been pushing for flexibility over uh, the look of the gun with with their newer stuff. I'm thinking of like the uh, the Ruger American rimfire rifle and that kind of thing. Um, you know, they've chosen to go for flexibility rather than making them look nice. Mm. Yeah. All right. Why don't we move on to the next product that uh, Kelly has? And I, for one, think that this is a much nicer looking product. Well, it is the Ruger Precision Rimfire. Ruger is coming out with so much, so many new things. So this is actually, it's quite, quite nice. It is a uh, molded one piece chassis. So it's adjustable. It has the butt stock that is adjustable as well. There's glass um, uh, filled nylon, so it actually adds strength uh, to it and stiffness and stability. I was worried about that. Chassis and stock or just the stock? The chassis and stock. So it says assembly are manufactured with glass filled nylon for strength, stiffness and stability. So and a solid foundation. So it it says that uh, that's butt stock, butt stock and assembly. So I think that it is everything. It has the glass. Bolt action gun wrapped in plastic then. Yeah, basically. So uh, it does have the adjustable buttstock. It has a flat Picatinny rail, so you can put a bag on it as well to add for stability. And what else does it do? It has an 18 inch barrel. I'm sure that you can, they say that you can change out the barrels, so it'd be easy to do. Uh, What else does it have? It has, uh, you can adjust the comb height easily as well. Uh, the bolt gun is adjustable. Shooters can change from a one one and a half inch bolt, uh, and you can change it out to a three inch bolt to reduce short stroking. It said so. And to um, simulate running the the full size rifle, like this is a it, trainer, that, right? That's exactly what it is. But the other thing I was thinking about was it'd be perfect for people are starting to get interested into uh, uh, rimfire precision shooting. So this would be excellent for that. Mm. Mm. I would like if, if I was using this, it would be to train to run a uh, precision rifle like PRS when I didn't have yep. the distance or I didn't want the cost. Uh, mm-hmm. that's, that's actually, that's, that's all I do. Sure. Well, that's what rimfire PRS is though. Yeah. That's exactly. Is this such a thing? I don't believe there's yeah. such a thing. Really? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Another, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Getting cool. more and more, more. There, it's getting more and more popular. So, yep. has can, Ruger, yep. has Ruger ever? Sorry, has Ruger ever made a bolt action twenty two rifle before? Yeah, mm-hmm. yes. they've got the Ruger yeah. American Rimfire. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So the Ruger American Rimfire, which I am familiar with, we we have one or. I've shot it and it's great. Now we changed it to an MDT chassis. Mm-hmm. Now is, you're talking. This is kind of like that, but the chass- I like the MDT chassis, but yep. this, if you're not willing to spend the extra bucks. Well, spend. do we know what this costs out of the box? Well, this one out of the box is 529 American. Okay. Yeah. And the MDT plus the Ruger American. Right. Yeah, hmm. it's a little bit more. So yeah. This- yeah, cause the MDT chassis is about 400 bucks Canadian, isn't it? That's right. Yep. And then yeah. you got to add like this: the buttstock that Ruger puts together is inexpensive but very flexible. Right. That's true. You can change it out. So, as I said, this might be something if you're, and don't knock precision rimfire. You know, try it out. See if you like it. It's actually lots. I'm sure that we can. I haven't. I haven't just... heard of it ever. So if really? if you guys are have it out there. Fantastic! I have I have never heard of it uh, being shot at any of the ranges around here. Yeah, it's starting 
it's starting to be talked about quite a bit. We're actually looking at even adding it to Maple Seed as well, potentially. Oh, cool. It's going to be yeah. lots of fun. Yeah, yeah, you can run a PRS style course on a much much shorter distance. It becomes yep. just logistically easier to do. So, yep. So. Plus, way cheaper. Yep. Less walking way out cheaper. to eight hundred meters. Well, yep. don't even go there because there may be some <laughs> small hills in between you and the they target might blow too. Out a calf. Yeah. All kinds of stuff. <laughs> but yeah, I, jerk. I, I saw this, and it's been yes, everybody's been talking about it, and I'm just moving it along so nobody picks on Trevor. <laughs> Aw, that's the supportive <laughs> side right there. No, yeah, no weird. weird. All, All right, right. Trevor. So this is um, the next gun we're going to review. Here is the Glock 19X. So. Buy the gun the American military rejected, basically. Um, we couldn't get the American U.S. military to buy it, so we want you to buy it instead. Or you could go get the gun that they did pick, the P P320. Um, normally, I'm a Glock fanboy. Normally, I love Glocks. Um, I think they actually messed this one up. So what we have here, the Glock 19X is a Glock 19 slide. So you've got the Glock 19 upper the Glock 19 sight radius on a um, with a Glock 17 grip. So you've got the length of a Glock 17 grip with the sight radius of a Glock 19. Is which... this something that the U.S. military spec? Like, did they give them silly specs? And this is the um, awful result of uh, of, a, of a government RFP, or is this like that really is Glock correct. is like you know what? This is the best thing we could put out because I'm sure they just said buy a Glock 17, right? Um, well, they, they, you know, the Glock or the U S put out the, the, the criteria for the last U S trials was written specifically for the SIG P320. It, like it, it was impossible to, for the SIG P320 to not pass because it was everything. I looked at the criteria at the time and it was like, Oh, how could you not, how could anyone except SIG win this? Um, the, so what they've done is the opposite of what a lot of uh, Glock owners do. Glock owners will um, take a Glock 17 and trim the grip so it'll fit Glock 19 mags. So they have the concealability of the Glock 19 grip size with the sight radius and accuracy of the Glock 17. Yeah, now, here they it's, did the, the, it's the grip that's pushing out when you've got this right. thing uh, concealed, right? Yeah, it's the grip that prints, not the slide. Mm -hmm. So whether you've got a Glock 17 slide in the back of your pants or a Glock 19 slide, you can't tell the difference. But the shooter benefits from the uh, Glock 17 slide. So what I thought, when I first looked at this, I thought, oh, they finally did what a lot of Glock owners have been doing for years, taking 17s, cutting the grip down to fit the 19 uh, magazine. Uh, no, they actually did the exact opposite. So somebody at Glock is dyslexic and uh, and got it backwards. Someone in the U.S. Army is dyslexic, and that's what they spec'd out Glock to be. Oh, uh, mm. Glock didn't make this thing to say like this is this is our best kick at the can. Right. Well, why you know they made it for the trials, and uh, but now they're trying to push it on the public. Yeah. So when it failed the trials, the army didn't want it. What makes you think the public's going to want it? I don't know. I mean. Um... No, they will. Like you look at uh, at some of the some of the rifles that failed the trial for the Canadian. Um, oh, what do you call it? The Northern Rangers there. They're out in the snowbanks fighting off polar yeah, yeah. bears. Yeah, those yeah, guys. The, yeah, the Canadian Rangers. The yeah, Rangers. the Rangers. Yeah, yeah. The Rangers. Yeah, there's no Northern <laughs> in there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, there were there the companies that submitted rifles for that. I'm thinking uh, Tika submitted a rifle for that. Um, there's a couple of other ones like those ones were available for purchase, uh, and they got snatched up. Like there was, there was an, uh, a number of people who were looking for that kind of rifle. So there must be some people out there who are like, yeah, that's my jam right there. The but in an short... ocean of, in an ocean of pistol, uh, choices, you threw one in there. That's the ugly duckling. It's just, you know, uh, there's not a lot of rifles that were made, for those kind of trials so yeah they're still going to and there's not is we don't have a bazillion different configurations of bolt action rifles and and options we got some pretty standard typical bolt action rifles with uh we'll see yeah. 
we'll we'll see if this i i don't i like i would never ever like being that we're canadians why why would you get the short slide and the, and the long grip but uh yeah uh, maybe some people will buy it who knows right maybe the, the only thing i can see this being interesting for is people who want to do one of the Roland special builds so they put an extended barrel on it with a comp and then have have the slide cut to put in uh, a red dot on it all that exists already for the 17 yeah this is yep. true yes yeah. that's true yeah hmm. and you can always put the longer mag in the gun mm-hmm. it just it stick out yep. blow the grip yeah you're right yep. there's no need for this no nope, it doesn't right. need, <laughs> doesn't need to be here <laughs> now to be fair I I do understand that Glock would have spent a ton of money developing this pistol for the program and trying to get that contract, and they have to try and recoup their costs somehow. So they have the molds cut to make the frames, so why not try and sell them? Yeah. They'll still be Glocks. They'll still be good, reliable pistols. They're just configured it's funny. Kind of weird. Yeah. Sure. All right. Okay. Good. We good with the Glock? All right, Adriel, you've got some new gun stuff on CGN you want to talk about. Yeah, uh, the first one is that Wolverine Supplies is going to be the Z Warranty Center. So if you have some problems with the Z, send it Thank over you. to Manitoba, and those guys will fix you up. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm liking this because I like Wolverine Supplies. Their customer service is pretty good, and um, I would imagine this for some speedy repair CZs. Mm, Montreal used to do... Uh a good job with the pistols. I don't know if they were doing all of the other products as well, but um, CRFAM in Montreal used to sell. I don't know if they still do. They used to sell a lot of CZ products. Mm-hmm. And I know somebody that needed uh, uh, warranty work there. But um, Wolverine is, uh, I think, in general, has stepped up their overall game in the last couple of years. We oh, had, uh, yeah, we had Matt on there when I interviewed him at the Nationals, and uh, they are. They're, uh, they're certainly more active than than I than they were when I first got into the game. Yep. Yep. So that's cool. Um, the next one I have here is BCL. Um, they're uh, moving their production facility, so there's going to be uh, you know just a hold over there. Uh, I could just read the uh, press release here. Uh, 20 mm. is going to be really exciting. Manufacturing facility is nearing the end of their expansion and modernization. They've introduced uh, technicians, which has increased their capacity. Um, an effort to increase the quality and designation of their new products. They're discontinuing the NEA brand and will no longer offer products bearing the NEA mark or products that were not completely manufactured in the Black Creek facility labs. Uh, this decision means that customers will not be able to purchase... Uh, will not be able to produce, uh, purchase new products from Black Creek Labs until April 2018. However, any new products leaving the BCL facility after April will be in a state-of-the-art manufacturing facility designated with pure mission intent and under full aerospace industry quality designation. So there's just going to be some moving over as well. Awesome. Now, will the um, NEA reputation follow them? I am, you know, I, what's the story here? Were they bought out or did they just change the name? I don't know. We're already at an hour 20 here. Keep moving on anyways. You got somewhere <laughs> to be? Or... Day. <laughs> the listeners might have somewhere else to be. <laughs> well, it looks like SFRC is going to put all their NEA stuff on sale. I'll go yeah, there and that's have what a means. chat. I'll have a chat with NEA Ryan stuff. and we'll find out and we'll come back and tell you. Yeah, maybe have, if you could have him on the show, that would be great. Oh, I've asked. Okay. I didn't. I'll ask again. Okay. Or you can just okay. do a little mini interview with him. Oh, I could. Yeah. All right. You guys good? Ready to move on to something else we're not going to talk about? <laughs> well, we don't have, like, if we had the information in front of us to to, to discuss, maybe, but, like, I don't know. <laughs> We'd just be guessing at this point. Well, and I, yeah, so I just asked the question in case someone in the panel here knew the answer. Ah. Right? If someone knew what, in fact, was going on or... But, you know, speculating is fun, too, Adriel. Jeez. <laughs> I want Adriel to bring something else up so that he can then tell you to shut up, Trevor. I yeah. think that would be awesome. That would be great. <laughs> oh, Brian, go f*** yourself. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> so, yeah, you might want to mark that down. Um, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Got main it. topic. Our goals for 2018. Who wants to go first? Hmm. <laughs> Shooting goals. It was Kelly's brilliant idea. Yeah. Oh, take it away, Kelly. Awesome. That's wonderful. Thank you. So 
My goals for this year would be to work on my pistol and AR. However, it's going to be a challenge. We're we're going to talk about what our goals are and then how we're going to work towards it, right? Yes. Do your topic. Okay. Sure. <laughs> okay. You, you define the parameters. So, uh, as I said, uh, my goals for this year are to work on pistol because I haven't been able to do much in the pistol shooting, but also on AR as well because I haven't really done any of that. I have an AR and I should be shooting it. And I will have to be shooting it because of the fact, again, we're going to be doing no distance and I need to actually, you know, shoot one. Anyways, um, so how I'm going to do that is going to be a challenge because of the fact that I do know that uh, this year we've got 20 plus events scheduled for Maple Seed. So yeah, I have to fit it in some place. Um, but one of the things I am going to try and do is on the weekends when we aren't shooting those, then I am going to go to the range and specifically work on the AR as well as pistol. I am going to be going down to Valkyrie Defense at some point because I won, well, I didn't really win anything. Jay Hines arranged for me to get a Valkyrie Defense gift certificate. And I'm going to go down there and do a handgun course, um, but a knife course. But I will need to probably that will help with my with my pistol shooting as well. I do need to get a furlachi, and I don't know if I'll be able to do that this. Uh, my other goal is to get more. Fourteenth and fifteenth. I will probably be either, well, not probably. I do know I'll be in New Brunswick because we put some dates on the calendar in New Brunswick. The 13th, I'm shooting a match in New Brunswick, not shooting, doing a match in course in New Brunswick. And the 14th, we're traveling. Well, instead of NB, you could be an AB. I know. So Kelly is going to New Brunswick and Trevor is yeah, getting out of the province. Yep. I see I see how Trevor did that. Uh -huh. And taking Matthew with oh. me. Yeah. Uh -huh. There, yeah. clever. Yeah. Travel. Yep. But I will be there on the 7th of July. So. Yeah, we'll we got a thing that day or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, the other ch goal I had was to actually bring even more ladies into shooting. So because of the fact with the CCFR, the whole thing I'm doing with that, uh, the calendar sales are really going to do that. So more events are going to be happening this year too. And I'm hoping to attend even more ladies events too. And as I said, Maple Seed is starting to do ladies seeds. So probably that is going to help out with that as well. So yeah. Um, uh, I think that uh, the other thing I just need to do is actually for my pistol would be to work on my dry firing and really make a decision whether I want to keep the lock or not and move, or move to something else. That's it. Cool. Who's next? Me. Hey. <laughs> um, pistol. I'm, I'm on pistol too. Uh, my, sh my shotgun in terms of three gun is right up there. Uh, anytime we have a pure shotgun stage, I'm in the top three uh, and usually uh, top like usually top spot. So especially on those pure, uh, short stages, my technique, uh, my shooting's fast and my reloading's all good. So I'm not, I don't need to do anything with my shotgun. My rifle's okay. I don't need to do anything there. I think it's just the pistol is where I need to work more. Um, I've got, um, I've got to get used to that Glock 34 and being able to shoot it as well as I was shooting my FNS as I had gotten used to that FNS and pretty well with it. Um, just got to get that familiarity up with the Glock. Um, so I, I need to, I need to get more trigger time behind that thing. Uh, I, I don't know if I want to shoot some more IPSC to get there. I know that that would solve the problem. Uh, I know that Phoenix has, uh, has like league next. I don't know if I can spare the time. I just, I, I need to get some more time behind the pistol to, uh, to get it up there. Cause when I shoot three gun and I compare myself with the other guys that are, uh, up with me, uh, near the top their pistol is where they're really making up time on me. So that's where I need to work. Weird, because usually, you know, it's all about the shotgun and three gun. Well, I'm good at, like, that's, like, bails my butt out every time, you know. So, I, yeah, I need to, uh, I need to short my pistol. So, go shoot your pistol. Yeah, yeah, dry fire more, uh, live fire more. Um, I would, like, I, I really get, not, like, very little out of just standing and, sh and punching paper with it. So I need to either start doing some of the drills off of... Um, oh, now why is that? Why don't you get anything out of that? Because uh, I, need, I need work in transition, in um, my reloads, in... Um, so you need a movement coach, not a pistol fundamentals coach. 
yes, I need to start. Like, I need the, the action need shooting a, of, yeah, of, the, of a, the shooting part. Yeah. Yeah, you need to get more specific in your goal. Identify what 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 aspect of your pistol game you need to hone. Yeah, and then develop a plan around that. Well, I mean, if I started shooting indoor IPSC, that would do it. That would do the mint transition, all that. Yeah, it would definitely give you practice at doing those things, and it would give you exposure to people who that's all they do, and yeah. you can see what they're doing and what works. Yeah, I need I need competition. Like I I can't just go to the range and shoot and be like, well, I'm going to do that better. I need to see someone else just kick my butt, and then I'm like, oh, that's what I got to do. So, uh, I I I can't do it without the uh, without the drive and the the competitive nature. Yeah. So, I don't know. So I'll got you know put put together a plan on that. I guess. Trevor. Cool. Anything else? <laughs> uh, not really. I mean, I've. Uh, I ended up late in the year here reviewing most of the hunting rifles I really wanted to put on hunting gear guy. Uh, the, you know, the, a lot of the inexpensive stuff, the B3, the Patriot, uh, Savage Axis 2, uh, even the, <clears throat> even the 780 ADL. So <clears throat> I'm, I'm happy with, uh, with all that, um, uh, because I think, um, those rifles don't get um, uh, enough depth in the reviews when they're reviewed by the magazines, and I think I've I've put a whole bunch of effort into those. Um, no, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna like this year is gonna be even more three guns. So I'm gonna do less of the hunting stuff and more of the three. Cool. Um, I have two goals this year. Um, to finish my qualifications to become a Ipsic Range Master, and to um. Take a class, because, oh my, um, yeah, that's it. So what do you actually need to do in order to become a range master? Um, criteria is all listed on their website, uh, the NRI website, how to become a range master. You need, uh, you, you need to work two out of three nationals. You know what? I'm going to look it up. Okay. Basically, you have to be selected and work the Canadian Nationals as a chief range officer. And you need to work two. And I don't know if it's back-to-back -back or... I'm looking there for I've got it all in my instructor notes. Okay, how to become a NROI range master. You have to be active in NROI Canada. And you have to be a CRO with a minimum of four years' experience. You have to have worked as a CRO at two Canadian National Championship matches in four years from the date of application with uh, a minimum of one Nationals. must be outside your home section. So um, if I had worked in New Brunswick, and uh, it wouldn't count if I was within that cycle, right? I would have to, like, work. Uh, sorry, no. One has to be outside of the province. So if the Nationals came to New Brunswick back-to-back, -back, I could only use one of those Nationals. Um, have been a match director at least two level two or higher matches within the past two years. Um, receive and submitted, receive and submit a written recommendation from at least two current full range masters, one of which must not reside in the applicant's home section. And receive and submit written recommendation from their section coordinator. Receive a recommendation from a, the regional director of IPSC Canada, and receive a recommendation from the president of NROI Canada. So, and then uh, there's a mentoring process. So you have to mentor with a senior range master. So um, the last thing that I have to do is work this year's nationals and the mentoring I'm actually going to be doing. Uh, well, it's not official yet and I don't see why, why it won't happen, but I, uh, I need to confirm. Um, I've asked Jim Smith. He's the president of NRY Canada to help me with some of the um, weaker points in my match director game for SummerSlam. Uh, I'm trying to always tighten it up and make it better and make it run more efficiently. And, um, he suggested that he's got some tips and tricks for me with regards to scheduling that will help prevent bottlenecks. So uh, since he's going to be coming to the match, I'm going to ask him to um, co-range master the match um, with uh, Chris Kingston and 
myself and mentor me. So I'll be oh. mentored under both him and Chris Kingston at this year's SummerSlam. Trevor, so that is, will is there is there like a an online resource where you can learn more about becoming like a a better range or, or um, range master? Yeah, um, there's uh, NROI Canada. Which you can just Google that NROI Canada stands for the National Range Officer Institute of Canada, and it has um, resources there to the rules, um, also how to become uh, an RO, a CRO, and a Range Master is all uh, all there online for uh, for for people that are interested. And again, this is specific to the sport of IPSC, but you know when you uh, get these um, certifications, you're obviously qualified to to run the other sports as well. Like yeah. USPSA would be virtually identical and three gun, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, <laughs> um, and then take a class. That's my other goal this year because Matthew and I have been teaching for the last couple of years and not learning any new stuff within the context of a class put on by another instructor. So, I am trying to connect with uh, Ben Stagger to get him to come to New Brunswick. So hopefully that will work. That'd be cool. Yeah. He'd be able what to teach you? A, a thing or two. Yes, I'm quite sure. Um, like, <laughs> as you said, he won everything in 2017. <laughs> just, just, just everything he went to. <laughs> right, right. Which was a lot and some pretty significant ones, like the Worlds. Yeah, yeah. So, yep. Yeah. You gotta um, like your game has to be so good and so consistent to win at everything. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I saw him. He he. Um, I worked the nationals and he shot the nationals. He shot a production gun. Okay, so a nine millimeter double action single action with a fiber optic front sight. No red dot. No compensator. A production gun. And I saw. Well, he beat everyone in the entire match with the exception of. One open shooter. So think about that. Yep. Every division, every open shooter, he tromped them. So when you're beating guys shooting those big fancy race pistols who fancy themselves good shooters and they are good shooters, and you come along and you put a beating on them with your uh, 9mm 10 folio, you're doing something right. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, a lot of it when, with him is, of course, movement. I mean, forget about accuracy. He's beyond accuracy. But it's all the other finer points, right? All those guys at the top echelon are accurate. They all know how to line sights and press triggers. And um, it's all the other stuff that he does so much better than everybody else. There's no wasted movement. There's no accidental movement. There's no baubles. It's in, out, get the job done, move to the next array, and do the, and rinse, rinse, wash, and repeat. I saw him fumble, fall out of the shooting area. There was a really uh, weird, the shooting area was a trough. That's the best way I could describe it. It was a trough, and if you had a size 10 shoe, your shoe didn't fit fully in the trough. So you had to walk heel-toe, heel-toe to navigate through this trough. And when he came into one of the shooting areas, he kind of stumbled a little bit, fell out, pulled himself back in, and continued shooting. And he was like, you could see, he showed it. Like, he showed that he was a little bit upset with himself, but it's like, still, if he still didn't win the stage, he still probably had, like, in the top three times of the whole stage. There was um, two swingers on my stage. I was wa- I was working two stages. And on the first stage, one of the swingers was, once you activated it, it went somewhere in the range of Mach 3. You blinked and you missed it. It was ridiculous. I seen open shooters. Uh, they were trying to get sub five-second times on this stage. And very few of them got all of their hits. A lot of them would just get one hit on that target. That's how fast it was going. And uh, not Ben. No. Ben got both his hits with a production gun in that five-second neighborhood. It's crazy. So, And his gun recoils compared to everybody else's, right? But yeah. anyway, what about you, Brian? Uh, let's see. I am uh, going to try and focus on being a little more efficient with my uh, time and money for shooting. Um, try and do more stuff locally this year, not travel all over um, all over the country to go to different events and, uh, and training and stuff. So 
Um, part of that is is joining the uh, joining at the Milcon range, so I'll be able to do more more shooting there, which is more training based, which will help a lot. Um, and and working towards in doing that uh, with my rifle shooting, the the positional shooting getting better, uh, just being more efficient and consistent with that, so I'm not dropping points at, at those portions of the matches, um, and my longer distance uh, pistol shooting. I, I just need to clean that up. So that's uh, that's my big training goal for the year. Um, and possibly I'll be doing some instructing this year. So um, that would be a nice change, um, doing a little bit of giving back to the community a little bit, um, helping some folks. But I'm nervous about that just because I haven't taught before. So uh, being able to present stuff in a time efficient and correct manner will be um, something that I'm, I'm going to be needing to focus my attention to because if i'm going to do it i want to do it decent i don't want people to be uh, coming away going gee this guy's a clown he doesn't know how to teach so it'll be fine we'll see we'll see all right um listener food food back yes food back yes food back yes yes yeah from mark uh mark says merry christmas slam fire i'm part way through listening to the show to the last show and I have a solution for Brian next time he encounters a sleeping mouse in the house and wants to use a firearm to make it permanent. I am involved in cowboy mounted shooting here in Manitoba, so my mind automatically went blank. <laughs> Get it? His mind went blank. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't stop thinking, but started thinking about the concussion of blank cartridges at close ranges. At close range, started thinking that the concussion of blank cartridge at close range, well, that's as good as it's going to get, would definitely finish the mouse off with a bang. For mounted shooting, we use black powder 45 Colt blanks, but, the, but, those, but those same 22 blanks that Matthew used to propel pellets out of his 22 long rifle rifle would provide enough concussion at close range without doing damage to anything else. Uh, speaking of Matthew, I'm hoping to hear his banter on the show again soon. Once again, I wish I will wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year as I wait patiently for, for the final CFO approval of the range we have been working through the system this past year. Sincerely, Mark M. Um, yeah, when they, they pop those balloons on horseback while riding by with the uh, 45 blanks. Because when you're doing At cowboy action shooting, uh, yards. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Would that kill a mouse? I Oh yeah, I you think know, a forty-five blank would definitely do in a mouse. Yeah, but like no, so at 22, yards but yeah. or like at close. Well, at close. Well, My yeah, kitchen's not that close. big. Like I didn't. It wasn't a long-range <laughs> shot that I finished the most off in the first place. <laughs> I I have absolutely nothing wrong with this suggestion. I appreciate it. I'm not going to do it because I'm not going to go buy a pistol just for the off chance I could just shoot a mouse in my house. But I, I <laughs> if I had a blank firing pistol, I would. I would have used that. That would have been a great idea. Sure. Or just shoot a like a make a blank cartridge. Blank. Yeah. Well, of hey, course. Or or I wonder I could do it with a rifle blank. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, well, no, yeah. Get, get some get some of that uh, snake shot. Wheat. Just get some of the cream of wheat and throw it in the end there and uh, call it a day. No, that's the end. Then you can you can uh, fire form your case at the same time. Yeah. Winning. I could just use my air so <laughs> till it worked before it will work again. <laughs> True. It's not about what works. It's about claiming to have shot actual firearms in your house at animals. Don't you to like, dude, keep up. I like the rifle idea. There you go. If you're going to kill something with a, if you're going to kill something with a, a blank, there's no kill like overkill. And I think a rifle blank would be overkill. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's all right. You have to be yeah. careful. You don't want to create a mess because then I got to spend time cleaning it up. So, mm -hmm. well, I just would have squished it with my foot, so you're still doing better that way. There you go. Yep. All right. Uh, no iTunes reviews. Uh, what else we got? We got... Um, Shoutouts. Yep, we got those. Uh, Adriel? No, I'm good. Okay, Kelly? I just want to say thank you to Stacy for hosting, hosting us and for Bill Wilson for bringing all the Jamesons. And for Haley Daniels for supporting Project Maple Seed, she actually did a raffle recently and raised a thousand dollars Project Maple Seed. So, did you yeah. see the yeah. open letter that she wrote to? Oh, she raised a thousand bucks with that. Yeah. Nice. You were kind of weren't done there. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I'm yeah. used to it. Go ahead. Oh, all right, good. <laughs> um, I don't even remember what I was going to say. <laughs> the open letter that she wrote. Oh yeah, she wrote an open letter to uh, Harper's wife because of the tweet. Oh, oh no, that I didn't she, see that. Yeah, so Harper's wife tweeted about the guy who shot the cougar. Yes. And was making like, oh, you're competing for a small penis kind of jokes at him on Twitter. Yeah. So, yeah, she wrote an open letter and it got picked up by media like in Europe and oh, was really? republished on websites. Yeah. yeah. Pretty cool. Smart lady. Yeah. Yeah. Because her and I could talk 3D archery for hours because uh, she yep. works in a bow shop and she is the co founder of the Ontario 3D Archery Association. Yes, yeah, she is. Yeah. She's awesome. She is. Um, and Brian, what about you? I got really nothing. It's All right. too it's too early in the new year to be shouting at people. So. Okay, fair, <laughs> fair. I I disagree. I don't think it's ever too early to shout at somebody, but that's we're different. So, um, we're we up are. To, yes. yes, we yes. are. Yes, <laughs> Thank, thankfully, we're both thankfully. happy for that. Yeah, we're yeah. the same kind of stupid, but yes. we're still different. Uh, Patreonies, we're up to 79, and we have a new one. Jonesy uh, edited his pledge, so he's not new. He just edited it to a caliber of 223. So thank you, Jonesy or Jonesy. Are we going with Jonesy on that one? I think I'd say Jonesy. Yeah. All right, cool. Okay, and thank you to all the other Patreonies. You helped make this show possible and getting Adriel to the charity shoot. And if Kelly wasn't so busy, maybe getting Kelly to a Ferlacci class, but That'll be time for that later. Uh, please join one or more of our National Firearms Association, such as the CCFR or the CSSA. It's important to support those who support us. And then, of course, get out shooting. And uh, it's the new year. Try something new. If you haven't tried IPSC, go try IPSC. Go take a black badge. Take a maple seed challenge. Then go take a maple seed. Get a rifleman. Shoot a three-gun match. Go to a local club. Bust some clays. Whatever. Just get out there. Do some hunting. Go do some long-range twenty-two precision because apparently we learned tonight that's a, thing. that's a thing. So that's important. Go do that. Yeah. Uh, and then check us out on Gun Owners of Canada. Like us on Facebook. We are at eighteen twenty-two, which is a it was a good year. For what I'm not sure, but it's a year. So we'll just say it was a good year. It was a year. <laughs> It was a year. That's right. So until next week, everybody, keep your stick on the ice. So if you have any comments or questions for the show, please send an email to slamfireradio at gmail.com. Now go grab a gun and shoot something. When the talking is over, it's time to get a gun.